Hey, how's it going YouTube viewers? We're here in southeast Nebraska at Duck Creek Lake and we're gonna do some ice fishing today. And I hope we put some crappie on the ice today. The biggest thing today, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks how to put some crappie on the ice for you. And we're gonna go over some lures, some rods, uh, how to tie those jigs to make you more successful on the ice. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dave Armstrong. Um, we're out here fishing on Duck Creek today. Um, I am the owner of the crappie shed in Auburn, Nebraska. And uh, we, uh, we have several things that we do out of the crappie shed. We make uh, hand-tied jigs. Uh, we, have, uh, we paint all of our own jig heads. Um, we also sell plastics uh, that are all custom made um, throughout the uh, United States. Most of my customer, most of my um, people that I buy stuff from are from either the Carolinas or Texas. I do have a couple of guys in Missouri. Uh, this is another custom rod. This is made by Joe Thody from Auburn, Nebraska. Also, 365 rods. He also the the jig that you see hanging there is is painted and made by JE Custom Baits. The dropper chain and the rest of it was all added on by myself at at the crappie shed. These are really a this is really a fantastic bait for uh, perch fishing South Dakota and in the out in the Sandhill Lakes. It works real well because the uh, baits are just out on these tiny little hooks. This is probably about a size 10 or 12 hook. Uh, that's what that is for. So. Um, and as you see, it's got a little knob on the bottom of it. It is a, um, that is a glow in the dark, which we run like glow. We'll run glow in the dark, uh, depending on what the weather's given us out here. The, um, the reel is a Pacific Fun um, reel. It's inline. Uh, so a lot of guys want to fish with everything but inlines, but I will tell you, a lot of us here all have an inline rod, at least one or two. Um, basically, it's the old-fashioned level winder, but it, they made it into a nice fishing uh, reel. Um, so right now, I'm using a, basically just bobber fishing um, for ice fishing. Um, kind of like a way to do a dead stick, kind of. That way I can be in my hut or whatever, be looking out the window, see if the bobber starts going under. And it looks like you're getting a bite right now. Yeah, right now I'm getting hit. Andrew right now has one for sale. Right? Is it 75 he wants for that other rod? I think so. I might. Being kind of finicky right now. Right. And why is that? Um, usually time of day. Usually around, we're, we're at about noon right now. Usually like that about every time out at this lake. Um, they were really on this morning around 9. Live scope over there. There's my jig going up and down. What I would, what I would do is. Uh, why do you think a live scope is so important out here in ice fishing? Um, it's amazing, really. I can, I can set it up so like five of us can all see our hooks all on one, on one screen, really, and you can see fish coming in 10, 15, 20 feet away, and prepare yourself, and you know exactly where they're at, really. A lot, a lot broader range than like a normal flasher and stuff like that. You can see the fish right there in his bait. He's having trouble getting the mid on this one. Oh, I just left that. Using one of the clam. I quick trips and try a little light. I grabbed this little garden. It's called a taco minnow or taco minnow or something like that. Okay. For the money, one of the best ones on the market. Probably a small bluegill, really, on this one right here. Just a lot of Mm -hmm. Nice little bluegill there. He did not want to eat that. <laughs> kind of showcase what you're using too. Yeah, so right now I got the bobber. He's one of these clam minnows. First time really using this actually. But been working pretty good today. Armstrong. Uh, Aiden Hall. Jack Ferrari. And, uh, we're here to talk to you about selective harvest. As you see, we've got lots and lots of people out here fishing today. And uh, one thing that's near and dear all of our hearts here is that we keep these lakes for all these little kids that if you, when the camera was back on them, there's several little kids here. We want to be able to fit, have them fish when, when we're gone. We want to make sure they're still fishing around here. So selective harvest. 
farm is very is very near and dear all of our hearts. Uh, we are going to keep some bluegills today. We are going to keep about five or six crappie, and uh, the rest of the fish go back in the lake. The other thing with the selective harvest are, is the size. We kind of have our own little standard that if it's between 10 and 12, those are the kind of crappie we'll keep. Everything else goes back. Springtime, especially during the spawn, it's got eggs, it's going back in the lake. We want to keep that population healthy and a good population, like Dave said, for the rest of the people to enjoy as well. Because it doesn't take long and you can deplete a small lake like this in a heartbeat. And this lake's really not that old, but it's doing very, very well. And we want to keep it that way. And that's one of the reasons we, we stress the selective harvest part of it. Uh, one thing I definitely go back on, like, uh, keeping it good for the younger kids. I mean, I'm not as old as these two guys, obviously. But, <laughs> You're old up to your but grown, yeah, grown, grown up fishing these type of lakes. Uh, we were talking about it the other day. Uh, it's hard to kind of go around these lakes like this and find a good two-pound crappie that's bigger than 15. It's almost, it's kind of really hard to go find a fish that's that big. And we're trying to keep it good so that people will come out and find bigger fish and find bigger crappie and just enjoy a time while I'm out here. And the yeah. other part of it is. It's being out here with all your friends, hanging out, having a good time, and then afterwards, do a small fish fry, enjoy that that uh, bounty for the day, and then have enough for the next time you're out there. And that's what it's really kind of all about, good friendship and hanging out with friends. All right, I've got a Hummingbird Helix 7 here that's set up for ice fishing. And you can see, this is my jig. Um, I can raise it up, raise it down, you can watch it. And then this here is a mark from a fish. And seems to always work better to keep the lure above the fish and if you can make them come up a lot of times they're going to uh they're going to hit and this one's right on me right now there he is that's how it's supposed to work but it doesn't always work out that way and this is actually a pretty small bluegill for this lake we uh free pass to go back but they are fun and getting kids like this out here and being able to come out and just catch catch a lot of fish in a day is you know keeps them occupied and gets them hooked on the sport early and keeps them busy and out of trouble. All right, Good. so today we're using some stuff from uh, Miss Bacon Baits. They're called Pimp and Shrimp. They look like this. We have many colors. We have neons, we have glow in the darks. Um, we have them in many, many colors. We've caught a lot of the crappie that you've seen in the pictures on the neons and on plastic. We do tip some of some of it with wax worms but a lot of the times it's just this we also use um, hair jigs they look just like this they've got a dart head on top they are t these are um, these are actually these jigs are actually painted in the crappie shed in my garage and they are hand tied by uh, Jack Freire who we call him Jack's jigs and uh, he's a really good tire learning and does a really nice job. We also you're good. We also are using um, from J and E Custom Baits. We're using what they call as a frost spoon, and the frost spoon sets this this particular one sets horizontal. It's uh it's it, it does glow in the dark. The dots that you see on it um, will glow in the dark if you use a glow ring on them. And um, I happen to always have a glow ring in my in my hut with me. Or a, or a handheld um, that's um, and then we have a we have what they call is a it's a dropper spoon and these dropper spoons are very unique you're not buying these anywhere except in southeast Nebraska because these are made by JE custom baits um, th these um, we take these up to um, South Dakota and use them perch fishing we also catch crappie on them here in Nebraska in fact, one of the guys that's fishing with us today, Hayden Hall, he loves these things. So he stopped by and bought some the other day. And we have many colors, like I showed you the blue one. We also have it in a purple, uh, which is really unique looking. We also add what they call a dropper chain to these baits. And the dropper chain is just a chain. Instead of the hook, we put a dropper on it. And the chain hangs down. And I showed you guys that a little while ago with the... Uh, with that on. That purple so one that's that I'm using today. Yeah. I caught that big. My biggest crappie today has come on that. With, just tip with wax worm. No, you just tip it with a wax worm. Is yep, that just tipping it, it with wax worm. They got a bucket uh, full. Okay. I think we're good. Caught my biggest one back over there, kind of in an area that's kind of a little bit cleared out, not directly in the sticks, but yeah. yeah I just picked this up thing the other day, and I love it. I'm kind of mad that I didn't get it earlier. Uh, anytime, especially when you're kind of dealing with these little bit of bigger bluegills. 
when they can really get it down there and you can't really move with the mouth space and stuff, mm -hmm. these things are awesome. I love it to death. I'm very happy I got one. I mean, it's awesome. 